Do you know why Oklahoma is called the Sooner State? In 1889, people participated in what was called the land rush. At noon, the race began to allow folks to rush to stake their claims to nearly 6 million acres open for settlement by the U.S. government. Those who entered the area before the race had even started were dubbed Sooners. So there you go. Now let's examine how Oklahoma and Thailand compare with each other. The state's name is derived from the Choctaw words Okla, which means people, and Huma, which translates it red. So the name means red people. If any woke people are viewing this, relax. Everything is okay. In 1939, the Thais changed the name of their country, Siam, to Thailand. The word Siam comes from the Sanskrit language and it means dark or brown and reference to the skin color of the native people. When I first arrived in 99, it seemed like all the Thai people looked alike. Of course, that makes no sense, but at the time, all I saw were brown people with black hair. Since then, I've seen all sorts of colored people. Some are blue. And it's pretty common to see whitish folks. Actually, these photos are from a Buddhist wedding and monk ceremony. The white markings on the face is part of the ritual. Some folks have an earthly color to them. <laughs> Racing an iron buffalo is dirty work. And sometimes I see people that are all sorts of colors. Funny thing is that some Thais think many of us Western guys look alike and they may have a point. The resemblance between Tom Cruise and I is uncanny. Now let's return to the land rush in Oklahoma. I would think that during this mad dash to find a place to live, the availability of water must have been on the settler's mind. For a few folks living on the border of Myanmar and Thailand, obtaining water is still a struggle, and this is why. These people are part of the Shan tribe that used to live in what was once known as Burma. However, they were driven from their village by government thugs. Legally, they can't cross into Thailand, so they are stuck on the border. Their water comes from a mountain stream. Every few days, a long trek is needed to transport water back to the village on horseback. Their houses are built using local materials and they rely on solar power for electricity. Wasting water is frowned upon and washing day is every two weeks. Taking a long hot shower is not a daily ritual. Many Okies seek shelter in their basement or other shelter during the tornado season. There is no tornado season where these Shan people live but they still build places to escape danger. Notice the hole built in the mountain right next to the school. It is a bomb shelter. Let me explain. In the past, the bad guys would fire mortars into the villages, eventually forcing the villagers to leave. The problem was where to go. Many of them settled on the border of Thailand, where they felt relatively safe. Even so, they have built bomb shelters like this one next to a school just in case. The world's first installed parking meter was in Oklahoma City in 1935 to park and cost a nickel which was considered expensive by many. Some people opposed the meters and said they look like hitching posts for the horses. The word Thailand means land of the free and many Thais take that literally. For example, Thailand has a few parking meters which most drivers seem to ignore. They believe that they are free to park wherever. Oklahoma is rich in history. For example, a little known fact is that I was born in Tulsa and it appears that I was a fat baby weighing almost 10 pounds. Sorry, Mom. I spent many summers in Oklahoma, there on my grandmother's three-acre farm on what was once the outskirts of the city. Obviously, child safety seats weren't around then. Thailand recently made them mandatory, and the public is slowly being educated about using them. However, I don't know what they're going to do about motorcycles. The weather in Oklahoma is somewhat similar to Thailand, as the spring is often wet, and the summer can be so hot that one doesn't mind sitting in a dentist's chair in a cool office. Dentists in Thailand are exactly like dentists in Oklahoma, with one biting example, the price.
For example, the cost of a root canal in the Sooner State is at least a thousand bucks. The cost for a cleaning is around $125. For many people, that can set their teeth on edge. I had to have a root canal done here in Thailand and just the thought of it was unnerving. Fortunately, it only cost $580. My annual teeth cleaning is maybe 30 bucks. Now that's a dental bill I can sink my teeth in. Most of the dentists in Thailand are professional, well-trained, have all sorts of the latest gadgets, and generally work in the dental clinic of some hospital. What do dentists call the x-rays they take a patient's teeth? Toothpicks. This one shows my teeth after fighting with the tree branch. The branch lost but went down swinging. Eskimo Joe's was voted the best college post-game hangout by Sporting News, ranked third in the perfect 10 college sports bars list by Sports Illustrated, and was named in Playboy's top 10 college sports bars. And for some reason, Eskimo Joe ended up in Thailand. Cop, bat noon, bat noon, can I, uh, taloop? Yes, and here we have Oklahoma. Carpoon Cop, thank you. This guy is wearing a t-shirt from a high school in the capital of the Sooner State, Oklahoma City. He also works at one of the local hardware stores and will often deliver supplies to us. He is a strong guy and can easily carry a 90 pound bag of semen on his back but is scared of going to the dentist. Thailand also has Oklahoma tourists. I happened to come across these 100% Okies years ago in Bangkok. Another connection between Oklahoma and Thailand is personal and perhaps the oddest one out of the bunch. This is my paternal grandfather whose name was also George. He is shown here in his cafe in Tulsa. He died when my father was only 12 and as a result I know very little about him. We started building our place about 20 years ago near the village that Dee grew up in. Throughout the years as time and money has allowed we built various buildings with an eccentric rural feel to them like the waterfall museum, the tree house, and even a large outdoor aviary. call our place D&G Resort and as a joke there are even a couple of signs hanging around with this name on them but in actuality it's not a resort it's just our home. I have now lived longer than either my grandfather or father did and neither knew about my place here in Thailand. The coincidence? My grandfather's place was called D&G Cafe. Life is sure funny sometimes and I think both him and my father would get a chuckle out of our recreation photo. My grandfather probably made biscuits and gravy every morning at his cafe and here in Thailand I try to match his recipe. The main problem is that buttermilk is as scarce as hen's teeth. Enjoy our biscuit and gravy at George's Pizza. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the Sunflower State.